Hello, River Birch families. This is Mrs. Gorgas, the assistant principal at River Birch. I hope this video finds you and your family doing well at home. As you heard from Mr. Kingery's message earlier this evening, our teachers are providing awesome at-home learning experiences with online content that will support you and your child in making the most of learning at home. In addition, we want these activities to create memories and enhance this time that you have at home with your children. Gone are the days that you're stressed and worried about if you've done it right. Instead, we're providing you opportunities to enjoy learning in the time that you have together. The purpose of this video is to help you know how to get your child's online learning materials as easily and quickly as possible. Our goal is to remove every barrier that you have so that your child can benefit from the additional content found online to receive the support they need when they need it and that we have fun while we're doing it. So we've made a few changes on our end to ensure online learning is consistent from teacher to teacher and grade level to grade level. The first change that we've made is here. We're providing an equitable learning experience, which means that students are receiving identical content online and offline. Our goal is to continue learning engagement that helps our students remain in activities that support our Indiana academic standards. Both the online and offline learning activities are the same. Online, you'll have more support and videos that might help you with access or understanding any of the educational terms that are in the IDOE challenges that are presented. But we want you to know that at the same time, if you don't have internet or access to technology, the offline activities are exactly the same. Please remember that if you don't have internet or access to technology at home, we want you to call our office and request paper materials. Mr. Kingery shared that in his message with you this evening, so you can refer to ParentSquare for specifics. The second change that we've made is we are now offering grade level office hours. To further support families throughout the day, our teachers are providing all day office hours on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This means that the teachers have signed up for hours to make sure that no matter what time of day your children are able to engage in at home learning, that we have someone that you can reach out to if you or they need any help. So even if it isn't their classroom teacher, we're all in this together and we're all here to help at any time. We'll share those office hours with you and we ask that you reach out to the teacher who's on call if you have an immediate question that needs to be answered at that time. If it doesn't need to be answered, feel free to always reach out to your classroom teacher. In this tutorial, there are four sections. We're gonna log into Schoology as a student. We'll learn where to find updates, school-wide and e-learning. We'll learn where to find learning materials and activities and learn different ways to submit your child's awesome work. So the first thing that we're going to do is walk through the process to log on to Schoology. So make your way to the Avon website. A nod to our district technology team who has worked pretty tirelessly to update our district site to provide our school community with recent relevant and up-to-date information. As you can see here on my screen, there's so much information here dealing with our current situation that you could spend a few minutes clicking around and might find some resources. But for now, we're going to start to click either on this parent resource link or you can click right here on the word parents. Here you're going to see all of Avon's e-learning resources. I encourage you to look through them, like I said, but for now we're going to focus on how to log into Schoology. So scroll down and then you're going to click here. That will bring you to this Schoology student login directions page. And honestly, the one thing that I feel that we are supporting a lot is that your st child student ID number is a unique number that identifies him or her in our system. And you do need to have that number. So if you do not have your child student ID number, we encourage you to reach out directly to your child's teacher. He or she would be able to provide that for you. So once you do have that, you're going to see a sign-in box that's coming from Microsoft. And I think that's the confusing part for many parents. It's not coming from Schoology yet. So you're going to get this Microsoft, this Office 365 login page, where you do need to put your child's ID number followed by at students.avon-schools.org. When you click next, it's going to ask if you want your child to stay signed in. You can choose yes or no, and then it's going to ask you to accept permissions. And so what it's going to say is, does Schoology have permission to access this email address? And you click accept, and then it should let you write in. If you have any trouble, that's where we ask you to reach out to either the teacher that's on call for the grade level, contact your child's teacher or any one of us, and we can help you try to get logged into Schoology. But once you do get logged in, this is what you're going to see. 
This is the main landing page or the home page for a student's interface in Schoology. You can find your child's name up here at the upper right hand corner and much of this looks identical for every student at River Birch. Our teachers are committed to communicating with you and your children in ways that make it easy for you to get what you need quickly. And so there are two types of updates that you can check for as soon as you log in. The first are school-wide updates. School-wide updates will always appear on this main landing page underneath this recent activity tab. This is typically where you'll see updates from our related arts staff. Mr. King or I might post a school-wide update um, encouraging students and families to um, engage in a, in a particular activity or share something that we've been doing um, on the learning activities that are there for you. Ms. Kotke might also put a welcome message for students in the school-wide communication area. We also have a second type of communication or update that's specific to your child's e-learning course. And so if you look right here where it says courses for your child and you click, you're going to find all of the courses that are listed for um, him or her. What you're looking for is the e-learning day course. And so you can see here that this is Marin's, Mrs. Guernsey's e-learning day. And so we're going to click right there and open it up. So this page right here is just for e-learning communication for e-learning, materials for e-learning, and resources for e-learning will all be found right here. The first thing that we recommend that you do is some teachers will provide updates here, very much like a scroll feed. We've asked them to clear everything out so that there's nothing there as they get started tomorrow, but you might find updates to information that would be specific to Mrs. Guernsey's classroom on this class update page. Then you're going to want to click on the materials part. This is where you're going to find those easy to find folders with information for your children to participate in e-learning. So to make it easy on parents and students, we've asked teachers and they have been so wonderful in making these adjustments so that we're consistent for all of our families. They've done several things. So they've organized each folder so that the tasks are there to be completed from top here to bottom. So if your child was picking and choosing which activities to do if they were working independently, it might be confusing because there would be videos or directions or communication up here at the top that would help support the activities that they were at the bottom. So help your child know to go in order so they aren't missing important coaching or directions that will help them on those activities. Another thing we've done is work together so that our students are hearing many River Birch voices because it's so important to us right now that you and your children know that we all miss you so much. So your child's teacher will always provide a morning video. So you can see here it says, first of all, watch my video when you finish, and this will be very tailored to your child's classroom. There might be, however, an activity where another teacher has contributed to provide some instruction and coaching for your child. So you can see here that this is Mrs. Kennard, and I can tell you Marin will be really excited to start seeing all of the third grade teacher faces. So in that video, Mrs. Kennard helps students know how to navigate their materials for the week. And so it's not Mrs. Guernsey, but it is another third grade friendly face that she's used to seeing every day on the playground. So we're really trying to present as many faces uh, with our teachers with your students as possible because they all miss them so much. And so being in this together, we know that we want to uh, make sure that we stay connected, which is one of our goals. So how do you submit your child's work? Well, there's three ways really. And first we're gonna let you know that the best way is to follow the flow of the assignments in the folder. This is the part where you get to do what your teacher asks you to do, and they've simplified this process. You know, we've eliminated a lot of the print and turn in options. We've tried to eliminate the barriers so that it would be really difficult. This would be an opportunity for students to type in or send a video message back. Really, the teachers will be requesting how they do that. In addition to that, what we're asking is online learning or offline. Feel free to take a picture of the product that your child created. Let's say it's a bar graph of the weather for that week. Take a picture with your phone and then you can email it or send it through Parent Square to your teachers so that they can see the learning that your children are doing at home. It doesn't need to be so technical that it's all the ways all the way through Schoology, uh, but if there are directions here like this discussion board and this discussion board, be sure that your children complete those too. And in addition, share pictures or products with um, the teachers as possible. 
we had one parent tell us that she had a scan feature, like an app that she downloaded for free on her phone. And instead of taking a picture, it just scanned it. And she was able to send it right along to her teacher because they were having trouble uploading things to Schoology. So we're here to be creative and flexible because we want to see and celebrate all the work that you and your children are doing with our at-home learning activities. So let your teacher know if you're having a hard time submitting any of, the, any of the work or that you need to have some ideas for how to get them some of the cool things that they're doing. I know that our teachers are there and willing to support you. So this brings us to the end of our tutorial. And remember, we said that we would walk through how to log into Schoology, learn where to find updates or communication that is school-wide and specific to your child's e-learning classes. You would learn where to find the e-learning materials and activities and learn different ways to submit your child's work. So feel free to use this or part of this screencast tutorial to go back and refresh if it gets to be confusing again and know that we're always here to help you through it. You know, we didn't plan for it to be like this, uh, especially at the close of the year, but we're extremely grateful that we have you in this partnership and we know that together we'll get through this. Thank you for so many things, first and foremost, helping us to help your children still feel successful with learning. Thanks and have a great evening.